Hello and welcome to The Rest is Football with me, Gary Lineker, uh, Micah Richards, but no uh, Alan Shearer this week, uh, unfortunately couldn't make it, but we've got someone way better than Alan Shearer. Come on, drum roll, come we've, on! Drum roll, we've got a special guest, very special guest, the captain of Liverpool and Netherlands, uh, a certain Virgil van Dijk. Um, good afternoon, Virgil. Good afternoon. Thank you so much uh, for doing... What is, I believe, your first ever appearance on a podcast? <laughs> it is. Times have changed. No, thanks for having me. Okay. Um, first, um, tell us a little bit about what you've been doing today. Yeah, obviously, uh, I've been playing in the park here. And um, thanks to McDonald's, um, they were offering for at least half a mil of kids um, fun football uh, around the country. And um, I've been part of the, the campaign now for a while, it's my third session, and um, I really enjoy it. I really enjoy being out there, um, playing with the kids, um, seeing their smiles. You know, it just gives you so much, so much back. And uh, I really, I really thank McDonald's for for doing that, and um, it's been great. And how does it work? So obviously, they they offering the uh, football sessions, free football sessions, yeah. fun football sessions around the country, and. It's just it's just great because obviously times have been changing. You know, when I was younger, when you guys were younger, playing outside was a bit was a bit normal. You know, you 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 you, you it was always the thing. Um, and times have been changing a little bit. And um, this, thanks to McDonald's, have definitely been um, boosting a lot of kids and and to go outside and including your own, I hear. Including my own, yeah. definitely. I've took them to actually to a session before and. Um, they really, they really enjoyed it, and um, to see them smiling, obviously as a parent, is the is the most beautiful thing there is. But um, they learn so much from it as well, and obviously, as you guys know, um, it gives so much back as well. You, you you learn every aspect in life that you you would need, especially when you're older. Yeah, your youngster's got a bit of talent, Virgil. Well, <laughs> come on, tell us. <laughs> well, no, listen, my my eldest turning ten in the summer. Um, next summer and and she's she's quite active uh, different sports actually so not only one one sport so that's it's quite nice and quite nice to see and, and see what the what it leads where it leads to and um but i definitely encourage all the kids to uh, to move and to play and to dance and um but at the end of the day it's all there um that decision and and see where it, where it leads to yeah, talking about um, youngsters, uh, tell us how, how football came to be for you. When did you start realising that you had um, talent and ability oh. to make it to the top? Well, I think as a, any youngster, um, I started around six, seven um, in, in our um, local football team. Um, I got picked up quite early by Willem II. Um, a, a, a mid-table team back then in in, in the early visit in Holland, and um, I played there ten years in the academy, uh, but I was never a, a standout. Really? Uh, what position was you playing now? Well, I, I was I was always like when you're younger, you play as a defender, but basically. Um, no, normally you start up the top, and then the, well, uh, as your lack of ability becomes yeah, apparent, but, you move backwards. Yeah, <laughs> it is like that normally, but for me personally, you know. On the streets, for example, I was always a bit of an attacker. I was always a bit a player that wanted to score the goals. But playing in the academy, I was always in defence. Um, so whether it was centre half, a little bit of right back, um, but mixing it a little bit, and uh, that kept going um, definitely until I was 15, 15, 16. That was a time that I struggled quite a bit. Um, didn't have my growth spurt yet. Yeah. Um, you certainly had one. <laughs> well, certainly had one after that. Um, but um, and after after I had my growth spurt, after um, I got over a little bit of knee problems back then, um, things started to develop and went quite well. Um, I became the captain of um, the last team before he turned um, senior, um, and. Um, I made the step up north to FC Groningen and things only went good that way. Started to, uh, to make progress. Um, y you had an illness though, didn't you? It put you back. A, a Appendix. Yeah. yeah. And, and you had complications after it. Yeah. How worrying was that? It was worrying. Uh, obviously, um, you know, that time was, was difficult. Um, but, you know, I got over it and 
um, things happen for a reason. And I think that definitely should have happened to me, uh, unfortunately, but it, it should have. And it got me um, a lot of knowledge in how to deal, for example, with nutrition, uh, what's obviously a, a very important part of life uh, in general. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it was not an easy time, but it definitely shaped me again in, in who I am today. How did the move to Celtic come about? Yeah, so obviously I was in FC Groningen and I had an amazing time there. Um, you know, it was it was time for me to make that next step. And I think maybe you can relate maybe in England, if you play for a mid-table team and things go very well, you would, you would love to hope to make the, the next step to a, mm. to a big team in the Premier League. Yeah. Was it own. difficult leaving Netherlands? Well, I went away obviously with my, uh, my, my, my wife at the moment. Um, and obviously things are different. Things are, um, you know, you, you're away from your family, you are uh, on your own. It's a different culture, language. Obviously it's not, you know, not crazy difference because Holland and Scotland is not like it's five hours, six hours away uh, from, from where you, you lived before, but it's definitely uh, a big change to, to, to your life. And um, we got our first kid in Glasgow and, and I really, we really enjoyed it over there and it definitely also prepared me for what came next. Talk, talk us through the old firm, the yeah. Derby. How <laughs> special was that? I played it once actually, only. Only once? Uh, yeah, only once because they were in the... Because about the, four a year. Yeah, but they were in the championship back then. Ah, so they weren't in the they weren't in the in the in the top flight and uh, we played the semi-final at, at Hamden. And um, I would say the whole preparation for the game and the meetings with the police, for example, before the game in order to get you ready <laughs> was more intense than the actual game. <laughs> But it's a special game, you know. the The city is divided, obviously, in, in with with the two clubs, and um, it's amazing that at least play once uh, the game. Um, so yeah, it's 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 an intense battle. But at the time when I was there, it was more intense outside of the game than I was going to ask you what game. was like living in Glasgow. It was amazing that, that rivalry. Yeah, but it, it was amazing. I really we really enjoyed it over there and. We met some amazing people that we're still in touch with. Um, and, you know, the city in general is very bubbly. It's, you know, amazing. So we just enjoyed it. And um, of course you come across, you know, some fans of the of the other team, but the same goes here. In Liverpool, we have exactly the same in this in this regard. And um, by the end of the day, it's, it's still sort of respectful in a way. And then and obviously the, the fans from the other team that you come across, you know, they are very fanatic about their team, but it's still in a respectful way that they, they approach you. When he was at Celtic, did you did you feel he was going to get to these levels now where, you know, we're talking about he's the, the best centre-back, <laughs> not only in this generation, mm -hmm. but going back generations as well? Because I remember watching Celtic thinking he's got everything, but did you feel that yourself? Well, I think what, and obviously I don't want to, you know, pat myself on the back, but... No, pat it, what, come on, no, you no, can no, pat no, it back. No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I don't, I don't want to do that, but I think a, a, a way to go to success is don't look too far ahead, you know, and um, get yourself, obviously you, you have dreams, but don't yeah. make yourself a lot more short-term, you know, aims. And that was the case as well. Obviously when I was at Groningen, I would love to go to an Ajax or Feyenoord or PSV or, you know, because they are the traditional top three in, 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 the, in the league and it didn't happen, but Celtic was there. Yeah. And to be able to go to Celtic, to to play for such a big club, because, because people don't really realize how massive Celtic is, but to play Europe, Champions League first season, Europa League second season, you know, was for me perfect for my development. And then I felt obviously ready for the next step. And the next step was for me, in that case, Southampton. And that was for me already a massive step to go to the Premier League, what I definitely dreamed of. What were the differences between moving to Scotland and playing in the Premier League in terms of the two leagues? Well, for me, the biggest difference was from going from uh, Holland to Scotland because I come to a team that had 75% possession of the ball, um, playing against a team that sit in, um, a lot of directness, you know, a lot of challenges. 
that I wasn't used to in Holland that much. You know, it wasn't, most of them were even games, a lot of ball possession games. Um, so it was a, was a big development in, in the way I've played and, um, but something I needed, you know, something that made, prepared me for then coming into the Premier League was a lot more physical, a lot more faster in, in, in the pace of, of play. And, um, but I remember the first season with Southampton, we had a record breaking season. We came sixth uh, in, 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 in the league. We had European football the, the season after, and um, yeah, it was it was I was prepared for what was coming, and I kept developing, I kept learning from situations that happen happens in the game, good things, bad things, um, and how to deal with you know playing midweek, um, how to deal with obviously the media side of 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 of, of football nowadays. So you learn so much each and every game and every day that. You know, it makes you preparing them for what's coming next if you keep developing. Has, has the success that you've had in your career surprised me? I, I'd say that because of the way you talked about the early mm -hmm. days and you weren't quite sure. Have, have you surprised yourself? We don't really have the time to sit down and reflect that much um, because, you know, it, it, we're still on the train. You know, it, it just like... You'll have years of doing that after, yeah, trust yeah, exactly. me. Hopefully, let's say <laughs> nothing is guaranteed, but let's, you know... Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely, you know, uh, where I am today, being the captain of Liverpool Football Club, being the captain of Holland, um, having won what I've won so far with club and uh, club, um, but definitely personally as well, is something I, I never thought when I was, especially 15, 16, before the growth spurt, for example. But that's the sweeter, you know, it's, yeah. it, it just makes it, me appreciate a lot more than, you know, more than ever. Yeah. My journey and everyone else's journey is always different than, you know, what you normally see out there. You know, obviously we, we, we've seen Messi, Ronaldo, you know, those guys, they have been unbelievable, one of the best of all times um, and making their debuts when they were 17, 16, <laughs> 17, 18 and stayed at the top until now. And everyone, journey is different and that's why you should embrace your own journey and um yeah enjoy it i just heard you call your country holland that's what i do because of you guys yeah that, <laughs> that's why i asked because when we when it's kind of drifted away now we don't yeah. say holland quite so much no. here but we always did and, and and when we ever did like international mm -hmm. tournaments we would get a little bit of stick mm -hmm. saying, it's not holland it's netherlands, netherlands yeah. but i just heard you say it and i thought yeah. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> maybe i've not got it wrong all the time no, but you no. just did it for yeah, us yeah, yeah. so we do know what netherlands is yes we do know that correct much. <laughs> yeah netherlands. how did the move to anfield come about obviously things at southampton were going great uh, unfortunately i had a, a tough foot injury um in mm. the beginning of 2017 uh against leicester at home uh, very complicated foot injury and that ruled me out for the remaining of the remaining of the season, and but there was a lot of interest from different clubs, um, uh, including including Liverpool. And did you have a choice? Do I did have a choice at the time, <laughs> <laughs> and you know we we we, we really obviously thought about yeah. so many stuff and, yeah. and so many things, and um, we felt like Liverpool was the the best option for us going forward uh, in every aspect. Um, Obviously, the, the manager made it clear that I'm going to be a, a, a very important piece to the puzzle. And um, and I really felt that I was going to do that as well. Um, so eventually, we made the decision to come. How, how important was the manager in, in, in persuading you? Well, you know, it's, it, I'm, 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 a, I'm a guy that really wants to, before I make a decision, to double check it and, and make sure that we make the right decision. But... It's it's a combination of feeling, uh, conversation that you have with also with players. You know, we have you had Genie Wijnaldum here was obviously my team in the national team was I spoke to a lot already and obviously Jordan Henderson me and me and him shared the same agent so we know we, we know each other already beforehand so you know these things help and um, and also your own experience I've played there obviously twice before I um, joined the club. Uh, one time we drew, I think, and the second time we lost 3-0. Um, but the whole, you know, the, the, the city, the, the reception that the players will get, the, the, 
the unwavering support that the, the fans will will give to you and your your team is is something that I really um I really I really enjoy and, and also looking ahead thinking what the future could look like was something that I was really interested in. Can I just ask you about the the price tag and the, the pressure that comes with it was 75 million mm -hmm. correct um and you come from a big move obviously believe in your ability but did you feel that pressure with the price tag or is that something you just took in your stride it's all about showing your qualities first and foremost and for me personally i knew that when you show your qualities when you just being yourself and express yourself in what you can do no one will speak about any price tag and uh, was one of the first conversation i had with the manager as well is that you know you i didn't decide the price tag i could you know i had no influence on that you know the the clubs you know agree to that and for me it's just to play the best football i can and be important for the football club and obviously it started quite well um with my uh with my debut against everton and um i settled obviously quickly obviously off the pitch as well with the boys do you think you were helped by the fact that it was a January move? Because I know it's it, it's, quite, it's quite unusual. Most big transfers happen in the summer. But the fact that you moved and then you straight into playing rather than have that month or two build up. It's not very common that you get the ball rolling that quickly in the, in, in January move, but it definitely helped me. Um, you know, after playing my first game, we had a trip away with the whole team and that bonding helped massively because you get to know each other on a, um, on a normal level, not only on a football level, but you know as well as a player, you, you eventually get judged on what you show on the pitch. And obviously after I came back from that trip, I couldn't play the Man City game. That was a wild game, if I remember the 4-3, if I'm correct. Um, we won at home. But after that, I played all the games and things have been going well. You know, the performances have been going well. And, and I got to learn how we like to defend, how we like to play. And I really enjoy that as well. And um, it only sort of in that six months or five months, what it was, I, I learned so much. Obviously we lost Champions League final, for example, we, you know, that was a, that was a tough one, but it sort of gave me that extra boost in order to be there the, the, the year after and, um, and win it. And, and, you know, it was not easy, but I definitely, feel like it benefited myself. In that 4-3 game, Mark, you must have been defending, were you? You and that team? Probably on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> nah, 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 you were. So, so you talked about that that first game against Everton, that obviously that Liverpool derby is quite, it's, it's quite special, isn't it? Yeah. Although it's, it seems to be very one-sided <laughs> over the period of time you've been here. Yeah, no, listen, it's, it's a game on its own. And, and obviously we can say the same about uh, when we play Manchester United and now obviously with, with City the same, you know, these games are. Which one matters most? Of Everton, Manchester United, City. Oh, you know, the Merseyside derby is always special, um, and it's always tough. It's intense. It's a game on its own, and obviously they have been doing, you know, much better than you know the the, the beginning years when I joined the club. It's always it's always difficult, and especially when we play away, you know, it's it's, it's tough. And but um, as a player, you wanna you wanna be part of these games. You know, it's it's just it's just an extra boost that extra you know it's 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 just give you that extra um and it means a little bit more if you win for both sides um so yeah it's great but the other games as well you know it's it just because everyone will, will watch those games as well and um and everyone wants you to slip up and the other team as well and it's a bit of like let's go then let's go for it tell us what it's like winning that champions league oh yeah, it was, it was, it was special. It was, you know, what dreams are made of, you know, you, you watch the Champions League when you're young, um, seeing so many legendary players lifting that, that trophy. Obviously for me personally, seeing so many Dutchmen mm -hmm. living, uh, lifting that trophy and, you know, the whole build up towards it. Obviously the first one that we lost was, a, was an experience on its own because you, the week towards it, you know, the, the media attention you get, you know, the, the the everything. It's a whole show and a whole experience. And um, but actually, when the final whistle went, you know, it was uh, emotional, emotional because obviously of the hard work that obviously I've been going through. But 
my wife and kids, obviously as well. It's, you know, the, the sacrifice they made, you know, and knowing that they're in the, in the stands watching, and um, it was special. It was special. I will never forget it. Do you think it made it more special the fact that you'd lost against Real Madrid the year before? Yeah, but I think in general to actually hold that trophy, mm. you know, it's 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 very heavy. Yeah. But I, I wouldn't know. <laughs> but <yeah. laughs> but no, this it's 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 a special it's a special one, and also to celebrate it with all our fans. Uh, and then have that parade uh, the day after was uh, was incredible. And um, does it compare with winning the league, which which mattered most? Because it had been a hell of a long time that Liverpool yeah, had gone without. It was, it was obviously thirty years um, for the for the actual Premier League. Obviously, we've won many many trophies before that, but um, thirty years, yeah. So it was a strange one. Obviously, we've won the league almost already in. April, if I'm correct, obviously COVID hit that time. It was a crazy, crazy time. But what was it like playing games with that people there? Yeah, it was not great. No. Uh, obviously, we when we won the league, um, we had obviously to play. I think, if I'm correct, six more games. Mm. Um, the only good thing was that we had a guard of honor of uh, the teams we've played. So I think we played Man City, if I'm correct, Aston Villa. <laughs> If I'm correct, uh, you were playing me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that was the only thing, maybe. But you know, we wanted to celebrate it with the fans so much, and I think um, even that night we wanted. You know, we were all together, yeah. of course, but it wasn't. wasn't it wasn't feeling the same. No, no. Uh, but to actually hold the the trophy was yeah. was special, and um, let's see if we can feel that or do the same, but with fans in, in the near future. What was that emotion like though? Because when, when I won a league, I went on a bender for a week. <laughs> I'm not gonna like, it was just incredible. It was like a surreal feeling, wasn't it? Where you like, you're, you're really high, yeah. but also you're quite emotional at the same mm. time. Yeah. So you went on a bender and you were really high. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, it's legal. Maybe something else. <laughs> It's legal in Holland and oh, Netherlands. Oh, so, not so. for players though. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that feeling you got, I definitely experienced after the Champions League final. Um, but I don't know about you, but nowadays with international football, it's almost like a week and a half after the last game of the season. And it will still be the same this year. Um, but for example, going back to the Champions League final that we won, we had the parade. So I didn't, we obviously had a big party after the game. And then go straight on the on the on the parade, and then it's like you're really tired. But it's like you're going in, in both directions because you're so full of ad adrenaline <laughs> that you know you just go with the flow, and then the next day you just completely shattered. But yeah, and, and and after the Premier League, obviously we had a big party, but still, you know, you wanted to get the fans there. You yeah. wanted to be out there with the fans. But that feeling to actually hold that trophy. You know that that feeling will definitely remain the same, and um, like you said, I was emotional. Does the fact that you couldn't celebrate it properly with the fans make you perhaps more determined to try and win it again this year? Possibly, you're right in contention. That's what we try. Well, we we come against two amazing teams as well. You know, and um, everyone knows that one or two slip ups could be, be means the end of it, and what we can control is our own performances. And that's always been the, the mindset, to be fair, over the last years and even in, during the other title races with, with, um, with City, um, that obviously we came short twice, unfortunately, but to focus on each game at a time. Um, and that's what we're gonna do now as well. We hopefully get everyone fit, stay, stay fit as well. Um, and try to win each and every game ahead of us. Um, but we know it's going to be tough. Somebody told me a little earlier that you were a little bit of, which I hate to bring this up, to be perfectly honest, and I would have hated it even more if he was here, but you might have been a bit of an Alan Shearer fan <laughs> as a boy. <laughs> wow. Is that true? I wouldn't say a fan, but... Oh, that's good. Yes. We'll finish it there. I wouldn't say a fan, <laughs> but listen, Alan Shearer obviously is, yeah. is well known. Um, and when I was um, I can't, uh, 16, 17, me and um, my team 
academy team back then, Willem II, we had a trip um, on the on the ferry to to Newcastle, and we watched a, a Premier League game. I don't know against who Newcastle was playing back then, but um, I remember sitting next to the away fans in that uh, sector um, and watching, obviously, Alan Shearer at the time. And yeah, the Premier League was then something I really wanted to be part of uh, in in the future. And obviously, um, still not knowing if I'll be good enough or if I'll be actually making it, but. You know the whole. I think you've got a chance. Yeah, I got a chance. <laughs> having, yeah. having, having watched you a little but bit. But no, it's, it's, it's just the <laughs> the football, the the intensity, um, even the Premier League noises back then, and 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 the font of the shirts back then. You know, it's just all complete package that really, you know, made me want to come here. Let's talk about a few of the personalities um, um, during your career, um, managers. Coaches, how do they differ? Well, every every coach has their own way of managing on the pitch, off the pitch. Um, but I've worked with many great coaches, and um, I'm still in touch. For example, with the coach that got me in the when I went to Groningen, for example, first I started in under 23s, and that coach is actually now the head coach of FC Groningen in the, fir- in the first team, yeah. without in a different route. But he came back in the first team and. They're in the championship at the moment in Holland, but he's on the way to get them back up. But I'm still in touch with him now and then. And um, Kuman obviously has been a big figure in in my career and still is. How helpful was he? I was, I, it's interesting you talk about Ronald Kuman because um, obviously played in a similar position to you. Yeah, um, he could sometimes play in midfield as yeah, well. Yeah, I mean he was um, he was an unbelievable footballer with the feet. Did he have a big influence on you? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think the way he could trigger me. In training, but also in the games, um, to making me get the best out of myself. Do you think is, you need uh, to be aggressive to bring out? Well, do you, because you've got a kind of a laid-back demeanor. Is that what you mean? I remember definitely in my first season at Southampton. Sometimes in training, I could be a little bit more laid back. Maybe in even a simple passing exercise, and he would just standing behind me and just saying, and the rest maybe would misplace a pass as well. But he would just be on me like. Are you joking? Make sure, you know, and being hard on me and that helped me. And, um, you know, that that comes from the small things that he was able to trigger me and making me a better player. And off the pitch as well, you know, it's, I've, I've, I've known him obviously now for many years and we have a great relationship together. And, um, and that same feeling I got a little bit with Jurgen Klopp as well. You know, he's, he's always what you see on TV or what you see on the pitch or off the pitch, you know, that's who he is. You know, he's very emotional. He's very direct. Um, But the relationship I got with him is very, very strong too. And um, I really enjoy working still with these two managers. And obviously I know that the end of the season will be the end of Jurgen Klopp's era here. And, but everything he's done so far for, and the club and for me has been, been amazing. What is it about him that makes him so special? His charisma, um, you know, but also the way he coaches, the way he gives confidence to the team, the way he um, applies his energy towards the team and and also to the fans and to the yeah. to the club. But also, you know, it's it's a special thing. I think what I've seen to be a manager of Liverpool Football Club. You know, you need more than just being a a good coach. You need to understand the city, the culture, the history of the club. Um, and live and breathe, being a, being on top of you know the Liverpool Football Club, and that's something I really learned over the years that it's really important to to have, and it's not an easy attribute to do, to have. And you have, obviously, there's only so much that could could do that at the, at a club like Liverpool. From what I understand, that really started with with Bill Shankly evoking and and that participation with with the fans and he. He really gets that, doesn't he? So he's, he was the right man in the right city. 100%. Um, obviously, I think, obviously, he comes from a club before Liverpool, obviously, with Dortmund, that maybe has a bit bit similar, that, you know, it's a, it's one big family. The fan base is it's very close to the team. And um, obviously, at Liverpool, is is a much higher skill um, all over the world. And he, he really realised it as well. And uh, he embraces that too. And... Um, 
yeah, he's been he's been the perfect manager. You know, is he a hard club. taskmaster? Yeah, but I think that's part of the being at the the highest mm. level. I think it it should always be be that case. Did it surprise you when he he, he said he was finishing at the end of the season? Uh, well, yeah, I can't deny it. The, the announcement and and everything, you know, go about it, it surprised everyone. I could say everyone in 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 world football and and. But listen, you know he, he has his he has his reasons for it, and we all have to respect that. And in the end of the day, life, um, in general, personal life is bigger uh, than than football. You know, health, um, your family, your kids, your grandkids. In this case, you know, is 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 a very very important part of life. Maybe more important than than ever. And um, but he needs that time away, and um, we all have to respect that. And he has been. Amazing for the football club, but I also feel like the club will do everything in their power to find the right replacement for him. And, and, and tell us about some of the great players that you you've played with. Who's the best player you've played with? Hmm. I don't want to. Come on, first. I don't want to. I don't want to. You know, put other players down. But yeah, I'm not asking nah, you to do nah, that. Let's, <laughs> I, I would. I would uh, let me speak about players that, for example, left. And yeah, I think Bobby Firmino has been a big figure in the success that we had over the last years he kept especially those two next to him who are outstanding and maybe maybe one of the best wingers in premier league history keep them together um, the 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 triangle they were the way they work together and obviously for me personally the the defensive work they did in order to make it easier for us in the back it's been crazy it's been outstanding and um, you know, he's been he's been so good and also difficult to defend in training and but also that makes us, you know, learn how to deal with, you know, dropping nines or um wingers that makes them runs in behind and things like that. So I would give a lot of credit to him. Um but at the moment I'm playing with amazing players, Mohamed mm -hmm. Salah, you know, Alison yeah. Becker. Yeah. Um I won't forget Joel Matip. Obviously, he's injured now, but he's been incredible for the football club. Coming in as a free agent, um, it's it's you know this this generation that we of this era that we have been on the on the Jurgen Club has been an amazing era, in my opinion. Um, and each one of the players that have been part of it should definitely take full credit for that. How has it been playing the high line? You mentioned in Firmino in training and all stuff, but we, when we're analysing the game and we're looking at them, like halfway line all the time. Like how how has that affected your your game? Do you like that? Is that something that you enjoy? Yeah, I definitely, I definitely like. He's that. quick enough. <laughs> no, the, the thing is, I think you can only play a high line if there's pressure on the ball. Yes, and, oh, of course. You know. I would love to win the ball up high. You know, I don't want the ball to come in our direction. But if you see like, and if you look at the body language of players on the ball from the opponent, and you see they're gonna play it long, you can already read read the situation. And I try to read situations before it even happens. And obviously, then it looks maybe a little bit simple. But that's the hardest part, I think, of defending in a high line. Uh, and if you switch off a small second or a small, you can be caught out. And that's also what happened maybe at certain times, but you have to then learn from it. And um, But it all starts with the defending what the front three or the front, front four or front two are doing. Um, and if that doesn't work out, then you have to sit back a little bit more. Can I just ask you as well, you always play left side centre half, which obviously for your body position, for me, I couldn't play left side yeah. centre half. It's, it's too, why do you prefer that side of playing centre back? Well, I've changed this only since I went to Celtic. Yeah. Yeah. Before that, I played always right side. What's the difference? If I'm sometimes in a game to the right, you have to definitely change your body position. And and also passing is, is a bit different. Um, but I'm so used to it now. You know, I'm I'm just like, it's all programmed in, in the mind, in the body, and, and also covering right, left, um, stepping in. Obviously, the... The, the the when I have the ball the the switches to left and right can be can be still be done and um I really enjoy playing on the left hand side but it definitely sometimes is the case that teams will recognize that in in, in pressing you and on your sort of weaker foot so that's definitely something I'm still working on each and every day 
One thing you've, you, you, I always think the best defenders are the ones that obviously read the game like you do, but also you very rarely see you on your backside. You, it, the importance of staying on your feet. I, the defenders that go to ground are the ones that I always used to enjoy playing mm -hmm. against. And um, how important is that? Do you think? Well, yeah, it's, it's in my in my opinion, it's definitely important to stay as long as possible on your feet and obviously try to read the situation um, before it actually happened, like I said already. But um, if you eventually have to go on the ground, you have to make the right decision. And obviously it's a bit of a last resort decision because you're risking um, a free kick, a yellow card, a penalty kick or whatever. Um, and I think if you can if you can sort it with your mind in order to position yourself well and putting your body at the right time in, in the right space, then why not? You know, and, and um, a lot of it is, in my opinion, also thinking ahead of what's going to happen. Yeah, reading um, the game. Yeah, yeah reading the game um, and looking at, obviously, knowing where your striker is or but also looking at the guy on the ball, um, that body position, um, putting yourself in, in his mind while also scanning what your opponent is. It sounds... It sounds maybe a little no, bit no, difficult, no, I, but it is, yeah. it is like that. And um, like I said, you, when on the highest level, it's more difficult than when you play against lesser good team, but it is still a, a good trade. Let me ask you, you've been very generous with your time and I appreciate that. So just a few more questions, uh, if, if, if we may. Who's the most difficult opponent you've come across? Huh. Or name a few. Well, Lionel Messi is definitely... Um, Definitely a very <laughs> difficult opponent. I would say Erling Haaland is a very difficult opponent. Very strong modern day striker. You very know, different player, obviously, to Messi. Yeah, but it's, different. It's, it's just the you know the the that directness. You know, if if you give them an inch, they will punish you. Um, and the same I had with Aguero. Obviously, he didn't score many goals against us, if I'm actually honest. But since I've played against him when I was at Southampton, it was always a handful. You know. And he could finish left and right. Obviously, you know it better than I do. But um, you always had to be at your best. And even one goal I remember that he scored against us, 18-19. Um, um, he came in front of Dejan Lovren, if I remember, from across. And he just finished it so quickly. So, yeah, he's definitely up there. I would say I mentioned it also in another interview. Olivier Giroud, um, link-up player. Um, together at the time with Hazard. It was always Hazard giving them the flick and he would hold the ball. And we also scored good goals against me. And I always felt like he's not going to score and he, he managed to score. It's like, like as a centre-half. I know we as strikers, yeah. you know, we're, we're totally focused on, yeah. on scoring goals, but your, your focus is different. Your focus is obviously trying to stop goals. Yeah. Does it mean a bit more when you're playing against the very best? Someone like Haaland, for mm -hmm. example, you think, right, okay. It's a battle. It's a, it's, it's a challenge. Well, listen, I think... It's, it's, you know, we are human beings and when there's always a bit like a battle created, you always want to be on top of it. But I'm not going into a game being in a 1v1 uh, battle because for me, the most important thing is that we don't concede goals. And I'm one of, if not the leader of the back line or, um, and I want to prevent goals in order to, to do that is, is making sure the rest of your team is organized and being the best they can as well. And, it's not that, oh yeah, but the other two scored and Alan didn't score, for, as an example, that I did my job. No, 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 I want to make sure that we don't concede, we win the game. And I know I have a big part in that, in organizing the rest of the team. And um, so, yeah, it's only a win-win situation if you don't concede. And, and the battle that people are creating is, not, is, is going your way, but it's not my priority, not at all. You always seem incredibly calm. Is that how you are inside? as well as outside? Yeah, I think, obviously, I'm very aggressive. I'm very vocal. I'm very... I need to be communicated. I need to be sort of on it uh, in, that, in that regard in order to get the best out of myself. But to read situations, you have to be calm in mind. You have to be uh, clear thinking uh, in order to get the best decision-making. And... I find myself making that right uh, my, that right balance, um, yeah, already for many years, uh, and and 
um, obviously outside of the pitch, you know, so there's, there are many things to, to, to make you calm as well and make you make the right decisions. And what about when you're injured? Um, obviously had a long time out yep. uh, with the knee, yep. I believe. And then you came back for a, a certain period. Mm -hmm. Media was saying he's, he's not going to get back to his best. We've seen the best of Van Dijk. Obviously, I've been the media always <laughs> championing, talk, talking how good you are. And I feel you are back to your best. No, no I, well, I do, I do. We've got to be you. honest. <laughs> um, how was that period, though, when people started to doubt you? Was you still the same cool, calm and collected when he was coming back from the injury as well? Well, I came back, obviously, in pre-season. Um, what was it? 2022, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, fully motivated. I'm, I'm back in the team training. That was all I've worked so hard for. Um, and that season, I think, we came... We were up for the quadruple. Mm. We missed obviously, obviously the the last game where Aston Villa gave a two 0 lead away mm. at City, <laughs> <laughs> the, the the Premier League, uh, and obviously we lost the final against against Real Madrid in Paris. But that year I played, I think, the only player in Europe all the games, like almost all the game, most games of the of the year, and that year went actually quite good, and I think we had the Nation League. Finals, if I'm correct. No, maybe I'm not correct by this. But anyway, we had a short summer break. Um, not really had time to reflect on what actually was a good year after a knee injury, complex knee injury. What, um, and then obviously the the season last year was a very inconsistent season. And when it's when you're inconsistent, what didn't happen so far, especially in my time at Liverpool, you try to find for solutions and try to do things um, maybe even more in order to get things right again. And that's most of the time not the right way in order to get back to where you want to be. And um, I had very good games and I had very not good games, <laughs> but it wasn't that bad as what people making out. It was obviously not the level that everyone was used to see of me. Um, so obviously the criticism back then, that was sometimes obviously tough to hear because I'm not a guy that go out and read all the comments and what well, people actually had to say, but in some ways it sort of reach you anyway, because your family members, your friends, people come to you saying, how are you? Are you fine? You know, and you have to try and stay calm about it. And the only way to turn it around is eventually with performances. And I would say last year around, you know, February, March, after I came back from a, uh, six week hamstring injury that I also didn't really have in my career was also typical at the time, but um, things started to roll again and, and, and I started to feel better and confident in, in, in myself and uh, in, in the way I should play. And obviously the summer break, last summer break helped massively. I totally switched off uh, time with my family. Um, Obviously, my wife is a, is a big help in that as well in, in keeping me calm. And, um, and pre-season, I felt like not I have to make things right for the public, but for myself, I want to make sure that I'm playing consistently again and, and be the important person and player I am for the club for, for so many years. And um, the captaincy obviously helped. I can't deny that. But... Um, to make things right for myself was definitely a big thing. Looking ahead to the summer, um, massive tournament uh, coming up, obviously the European Championship and um, Netherlands will be, you know, one of the fancied teams as always. Um, I played in the one tournament they did actually win, 1988. Yeah. Um, that'd be a dream come true, wouldn't it, to lift that? 100%. Funny enough, the manager uh, uh, man uh, told us that there was only eight teams back then. Correct. Yeah. It was a bit easier, That's isn't right. It? We still didn't qualify. <laughs> didn't qualify. <laughs> well, we qualified for the tournament, but we didn't get yeah. through the group stage. We lost all three, no, actually, but, but, uh, including um, a Marco van basten yeah. um a, a, against us. But um, No, yeah, listen, it, it, for us, for me personally, you know, to lead out the boys there representing my, my country, obviously, in Germany will be a big honour, a uh, special moment. And it was, of course, in Germany where they won it. So exactly. a bit of history there oh. for you. No pressure. Imagine no pressure. <laughs> no, but obviously, yeah. like the last tournament I've played in in, in Qatar, um, you know, there was not many 
loads of Dutch fans out there. Mm. I fully expect, obviously, being yeah. it in Germany, next door, three hour, four hour drive. There will be a lot of orange shirts there, hoping, hoping to support us. And we, um, as a team, will love to make everyone in, in, in our country proud and um, getting as far as we can. And let's see. Very last question. Premier League or the European Championship? <laughs> <laughs> Both of them. Both of them. That is and the Europa League. League. And the Europa League yeah, as yeah, well. Definitely. Yeah, that's, the, that's the aim. But those are dreams. And if it happens, it happens. Um, but we're going to fight for each, each, each one of those those targets and trophies and let's see where it brings us. Virgil, thank you so much for your time. Thank you um, It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Um, we're massive fans, as I'm sure uh, keep, most keep of the Keep that country. up, keep that up. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll do our very best. Um, but thank you so much. You're very um, welcome. Absolute delight. Pleasure. Um, that's it from uh, The Rest is Football this week. Um, goodbye from me. Goodbye from me. Goodbye from me. <laughs> <laughs>